Today we have a very special guest. Her name is Dulcita White. Island full of oranges oh, is and a... great green banana trees. Yeah. Is it? A... Oh. An island where the sugar cane yeah. is waving in the breeze. Yes. Jamaica is its name. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to United Methodist Church of Manahawkin. <clears throat> um, there are announcements in your bulletin, just a couple that I would like to um, highlight. Coming up in another two weeks is Bible School. This will be my first cruise. So, <laughs> if anyone has children or knows of children who would be interested in coming and joining us, it's always a great time. They have loads of fun. And it will be on July 18th through the 22nd from 6 till 8. And it's open to all children. It doesn't have to be anyone just from this church. So if you have children who have friends and would like to bring them with them, just go on our site and register them and we'll have a good time that week. Um, this week, our special saints at MUMC will be Delcita White. Um, I watched the preview the other day and it looks like it's going to be really an interesting story. She tells about her growing up on a beautiful island and how things were then and it should be very interesting. So the link for YouTube is in your bulletin and just take a few minutes and watch it this week. It comes out on Tuesday. Um, if there is anyone who is interested in becoming a Eucharistic minister, we do need more people who are interested in, in bringing communion to our shut-ins and people in the nursing homes. Uh, Pastor Choi will offer a class. Either contact him or Pauline if you're interested. But for the next two weeks after Tuesday, you cannot contact Pastor Choi because he's going fishing. <laughs> he will be on vacation from the 6th to the 20th and we have guest speakers lined up for those two Sundays. Is there anyone else who has any announcements for the congregation? Please wait for the microphone. We have Wayzetta and, and Pauline. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, this past Thursday, Edna and I were at um, Magic, um, Magic Wash for the laundry for Loads of Love. Um, it's a mission that um, we've done here several years to help those in need with doing their laundry. Um, it was a pretty, pretty good night. We had four people that came and they talked nothing about what a blessing this was. In fact, one woman said she couldn't even believe that when she read it that it was real, that it was real. She had to actually come and ask us if it was real. So we are looking for volunteers, and if any of you are available to help us out with this wonderful um, mission that we're starting up again um, after COVID, please see myself, please see Edna, Pastor Choi. Um, we meet the last Thursday of the month, and that's at the Magic Wash laundromat next to the car wash um, by the Acme. Thank you. I'm going to tag on what Ms. Cheryl said. Can you all look in your bulletins for your color flyer? And I want to thank Edna for that. She made sure they were colored for us. Okay, thank you. So I need everyone's help. We can all do this young or old. This is the flyer, and my job is to get the word out, and I need your help to do the same as well. Right now, if, you, if anybody goes on the Sunday School website to register for VBS, they can get a free t-shirt. 
We're offering free t-shirts to all kids and helpers, adults, whoever wants to come for VBS. And again, year after year, from what I've heard, VBS at this church is always free. So I'd like you this week to think about a neighbor who might have little kids, put this um, you know, in their door, Uh, or, or if you can't get out and about, my voice is loud. If you can't get out and about, then stick it in an envelope and send it to somebody, some child that I enjoy this because I hear it's a blast. Would you please do that for me this week? Thanks. Absolutely. <laughs> Anyone else? Bob. Uh, when Good morning, everyone. Uh, just a reminder, I have chaperone cards, still doing chaperone cards. <laughs> And if anybody's interested, I'll be downstairs after the service. Thanks. Are there any other announcements from the congregation? If not, will you please rise and join me in the call to worship? <laughs> the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Our first hymn is number 98. To God be the glory.
Now it's children's time. The children come forward, please. ago when it was Memorial Day, Miss Pauline brought in a little flag and we talked about what the flag is a symbol of, our, our country, right? America, right? And it stands for freedom. We talked about all of that. But how about the colors? Red, white, and blue. You're right. Red, white, and blue. Excellent. Do you know that those colors have special meaning? What do you think the red stands for? No, you didn't know that? Okay. I'll... The red is for courage, you know, to be brave. For all the men and women that volunteered to fight to, to defend the freedom of our country so that we could be free to come to church and free to go to school, right? Uh, and the white, the white stands for purity. That's a big word, isn't it? Purity means um, like to do what's right. Are we always trying to do what's right? Yeah, it's hard sometimes though, isn't it? Yeah, I know, I know. And then the blue stands for justice, another big word. Remember when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, the last part says, with liberty and justice for all, right? You knew that, good for you. And so we talk about justice um, like everybody should be treated fairly, right? And with respect. We try to do that, don't we? Yes, I know. But let's think about those same colors. What are they again? Red, white, and blue. And let's think about them with Jesus. What do you think the red could stand for with Jesus? Do you have an idea? Well, I always think of red as love, right? Because we make red hearts. If we, we put a little emoji on a message because we love somebody, we send them a little heart afterwards, right? when we send him a message. Well, it also could be for blood because God loved us so much that he gave us his son Jesus to die for us. So Jesus' blood dying on the cross is what makes us, allows us to be forgiven, right? If we do something bad, we can pray to God. Kind of what Miss Pauline talked about last week. To God, if we confess to God, then He will forgive our sins. Um, how about the white? What do you think white with Jesus means? No ideas today, huh? Hmm. Okay, so how about white is committing ourselves to Jesus, trying to be more like Him, and when we God says we become white as snow, kind of like pure. And the blue actually stands for God's faithfulness. He's always going to be there for us. That's amazing, right? Even if we do like three bad things in a row, we just say, oops, sorry, God. And he forgives us. And then our sins are wiped clean and they're white as snow. What else is on the flag? Lots of stars. Stars, yes. Do you know how many stars? Lots of them, right? Okay. All right, let's pray to God and thank God for this wonderful day that we get to celebrate our country and freedom. Let's pray. 
Dear Jesus, we thank you for your gift of forgiveness and for shedding your blood for us. Help us to always remember that you have given us this great gift of freedom to worship you here in church and to worship you anywhere because you love us so dearly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Rosetta. Now please join me in the unison in the opening prayer printed in your bulletin. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen.
now it's time for our joys, concerns, and praises. Do we have any joys this morning? Or praises? Mom, Pauline? I'm sorry. <laughs> Marion. <laughs> I just want to say this is the most wonderful country in the world, and I'm so glad that we can celebrate our birth of our country and that we are still free to worship, to live as we would like. Thank you. text this morning from Bill Logan. He was updating me on his wife, Pauline. He said, good news, she's coming home this Saturday, July the 9th, after being away for 10 weeks. So um, thanks for your prayers, and I'm sure Bill is watching now <laughs> online. So it's a good news. I continue prayers for our members, uh, Bill Welsh, uh, he's on demand, I spoke with him yesterday, and uh, although he says he feels so weak, it takes time to recover. Anyway, I'll keep uh, Bill Welsh in your prayers. Uh, Colleen Ullard, that's another one, she goes to the second service, some of you know who she is. Anyway, um, by now she's supposed to be home, when I called yesterday she was not answering, so uh, no way that I could tell which where she is now, but anyway, she could use your prayers and also Bobby uh, Warmbier, and the list goes on. All the names are printed in your bulletin. Uh, separate insert there. Prayer requests. Let us bow our heads and pray. Lord, we are very grateful today this morning, because you are with us. We are also thankful for all the blessings you bestowed upon us. If we have not taken time to thank you, Lord, this is the time that we do. As a corporate body of Christ, we owe you everything, beginning with life, health, family, communities we are living in, freedom, justice, we all owe you for all these good things. We confess our sins, we are pardoned, and we look up to your face and asking you to remember our needs. As a matter of fact, most of our concerns and anxieties remain unspoken, yet you already know what we are up against. First of all, we lift up those individuals who need your strength. Their health needs to be restored and renewed. So even though we cannot name them all, you already know who they are. We humbly ask you to send your Holy Spirit the spirit of healing and strength. Surround them with your presence and grant them the healing that they need so that they may lift up their voice and hearts and praising God, God has healed me and made me whole again. We also lift up the leadership as always do, our national leadership, global leadership, Every leader needs your wisdom and guidance and courage to do what is just, what is right, and what is good in your sight. Yes, Lord, thank you for being with our leaders. Once again, throughout this worship service, your name be glorified and honored and fill our hearts with joy, thanksgiving, and the assurance that the Lord not only loves us, but he also will see us through. 
We pray all these things in your Son's precious name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture lesson. Good morning. This morning's scripture lesson is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verse 45. For I am the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt to be your God, so you shall be holy, because I am holy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks, Paulie. I don't know about you, but it's hard to believe that we are already in the month of July. Time sure flies. It is also time for us to check out our progress on this year's motto, as you see on the banner, to know your God. How are we doing on this goal of knowing our God? Have we made any progress in the knowledge of God this year? Ask yourself the following questions. How much have I known my Father in heaven this year? Am I closer to him than before? What knowledge have I gained and what have I done with the knowledge and insight God has given me? Those questions are good questions. As part of ongoing effort to know our God, I'm sure you know, I made an announcement before, every, you know, once a month, we go on the topic of knowing God. This morning, we'll think about one of the most fundamental attributes of God, that God is holy. His name is holy. His way is holy, and His word is holy. The Bible says God is the Holy One of Israel. The most exciting to us is this. The same Holy God commands us and expects us to be holy to Him as He is holy to us. I looked up in the concordance that has every single word in the Bible. The word appear, holy, appears 592 times, almost 600 times, 423 times in the Old Testament, and 169 times in the New. It tells us if we want to seriously study the holiness of God and the holiness of ours, we must study both the Old and the New Testament. We should not shun the Old Testament if you want to know who God is and who you know, He expects us to be holy. God's people today use the word holy as a cliché. The word holy is perhaps one of the most sad words in the church, yet often misunderstood and even downplayed by God's own people. For instance, we confess that God is holy, but we seldom show holy reverence to God. We say His name is holy, yet even some Christians use the name of the Lord in vain without any fear of the consequences. 
We sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty in worship services. But do we know what it truly means? Do we mean and practice what we confess with our lips? What's that mean God is holy anyway? What's that mean to be holy like God is? And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. I'm going to tell you three aspects of true holiness, followed by three things that are not holy. What holy is, the following three. Holy means that in God's presence, nothing impure or unclean is allowed. That includes sin. And this is why we must repent our sins if we want to be with Him in heaven, folks. Without repentance, there is no forgiveness, as you know. Without forgiveness, our sins remain, and that automatically blocks our access to God. Remember, holy God, no sin is allowed, so any sins remaining, it blocks automatically our access to God. And that's why we forever appreciate what Christ has done for us. He paid the wages of our sins so that we may be forgiven, so that we may be allowed to be in God's presence for eternity. In God's presence, nothing can stay hidden either. The encounter with the Holy God reveals what we are truly made of. Hebrews 4.13 says this, There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him to whom we must answer. God's word and God's truth and his light expose every sin instantly and thoroughly. Let me tell you about a one person who just experienced that. His name is Peter, the Apostle. One day Jesus got on Simon Peter, at the time he was a fisherman, his boat, and taught the crowds from the boat because people constantly pressing upon Jesus. Jesus wanted to have some distance, so he got in his, uh, Simon's uh, boat. When he had done uh, uh, teaching, he said to Simon, Put out in the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon responded and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. And they had done this. They caught a great quantity of fish and their nets began to tear. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats to the point that they were sinking. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' feet, knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. I mean, if you were Peter, how would you say, Lord, thank you so very much. I don't have to work for the next seven days. <laughs> Somehow, when he experienced the miracle of God and someone who did that in his presence, he felt so sinful. Lord, leave me. I cannot you know, stand before you. I'm a sinful man. God's holiness is contagious. Wherever the holy God is, the place becomes a holy ground. Do you remember Moses' story when God called him through the burning bush? Moses, Moses. The first thing God asked Moses to do was what? Take off your sandals because you are standing on a holy ground. God's holy presence turns anything or anybody holy. For instance, in God's temple, the altar is holy. Anything the altar touches becomes holy. Sacrifices are holy. Offerings dedicated to God are holy. Oil for the lamp is holy. Even the garments of priests are holy. Folks, these are not my words. These are the direct quotes from the Word of God. So what's that mean? Here's an application for all of us. Our heart, your heart, and my heart is a holy ground. We never think that way, is it? Here's how. Christ dwells in us. Jesus Christ dwells in your heart 
through your faith, the scripture says. That means that his presence in your heart turns the place where he is in your heart into a holy ground. Therefore, no unclean, negative, or destructive thoughts are to be permitted in our hearts. Same goes with the church. Whenever we convene in the name of the Lord on Sunday mornings or any other time, our gathering becomes a holy assembly because God is in our midst. And that's why church is fundamentally different from any social gathering, folks. Church is the assembly of the holy ones. It is a holy place of worship. Nothing unclean or impure is allowed in the presence of God. The second meaning of holy is this, to be separated or set aside for God's purpose and will. The Lord said to Israel, you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. God has chosen Israel out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his own and his treasured possession. Likewise, out of all the seven billion people in the world today, God has chosen us to be his own possession. Did you hear the possession? That means that the ownership belongs to God, not to us. Remember all the things offered to God in the temple are holy. Sacrifices and offerings made to the Lord are holy because they are dedicated to the holy God. So here's another application, folks, for you to think about. When our body and soul and spirit are presented to the Lord as a living sacrifice, they are holy and they belong to the Lord. Our lives are no longer ours, but His. And I've seen some individuals who would say that this is my life, this is my body, this is my money, and so forth. The emphasis on my, my, mine. True believer cannot say that. We should say, this is not mine, but the Lord's. Remember, you are holy. That means that you are set apart for God's holy purpose and will. You are separated from the world to bring God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. You are no longer yours, but God's. Third aspect of holiness is this. It means, holy means to be in sync with God's law. Imagine this. I can claim to you that I'm holy and righteous, but if I steal, if I cheat, or if I lie, then I am not holy at all in God's eyes, am I? To be holy means to walk in the law of the Lord and to walk in His truth. It means to please God in all we do and say. It means to be like Him in our words and actions. Here's another example. If you hate your brother or sister and refuse to forgive them, you are never holy before God. Why? Because you do not obey God's voice. Simple as that. So the rest of the sermon, I'm going to talk about what holy is not. Three things. Number one, holy never means arrogance. If you see anyone who carries the attitude of, I am holier than thou, that person is not holy at all. True holiness never puts us above anyone else. Jesus tells us a story about some people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Two men, Jesus says, went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, meaning religious leader, and the other a tax collector known to them at the time as a sinner. The Pharisee stood and began praying this in regard to himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, swindlers, crooked, and adulterers, and even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing some distance away, was even unwilling to raise his eyes toward heaven, but was beating his chest, saying, God, be merciful to me the sinner. I tell you, Jesus says, this man, the tax collector, went to his house justified rather than the other one. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, 
but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Arrogance has no place in holiness. The word holy never means somber either. Our God is holy, but that doesn't mean that he is a killjoy. Did you know that God rejoices over you with singing? Imagine that, God singing, rejoicing over you. To follow God never means we always remain gloomy or serious. Instead, God wants us to be happy and joyful. You see, when we become holy like God is, God gives us joy instead of taking it away from us. For instance, we worship the Lord out of joy and love not reluctantly or under compulsion. We serve the Lord and keep His commandments because we delight in it. Ask yourself, do I worship the Lord out of joy or out of duty or obligation? I'm going to quote uh, one author, wonderful pastor, Andrew Murray. I quote, Holiness is essential to true happiness. Happiness is essential to true holiness. If you would have joy, the fullness of joy and abiding joy, which nothing can take away, be holy as God is holy. Holiness is blessedness. Nothing can darken or interrupt our joy but sin. The reason why we want to be holy is because sin takes away our joy. Therefore, when we are holy, we'll have and retain joy with us. May the Lord help us to find true joy in holiness. Holiness never means somber. Finally, true holiness never seeks human praise and recognition. This is what Jesus warns in Matthew chapter 6. Chapter, um, yeah. He says this, Take care not to practice your righteousness in the sight of people, to be noticed by them, Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the poor, do not sound the trumpet before you. Interesting, Noah played the trumpet. Perfect objective lesson. Uh, obviously, in those days, you know, they just blow the trumpet. Folks, let everybody know we're doing giving these charities, right? Jesus says, when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, so that they will be praised by God and by people. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your charitable giving will be in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When you pray, Jesus continues, you are not to be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that they will be seen by people. I truly, I say to you, they have their reward in full, but as for you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, Jesus continues, do not make a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they distort their faces so that they will be noticed by people when they are fasting. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full, but as for you when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that your fasting will not be noticed by people, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. True holiness never seeks people's praise or attention. As for closing, I will say this, folks. God commands you and me to be holy like He is holy to us. Holiness is God's plan for us. If you are wonder, Lord, what's your plan for me? At least one answer definitely you can find in the Bible. God's plan for you is that holiness, to be like Him. It's very, uh, I think, to me, is a privilege that God calls us saints. Now, some of us have a notion that, oh no, I'm no saint. We've been doing the saints at MUMC. A lot of interviewees, when I asked to be in the, on the show, they say, well, I'm no saint. I know that. But perhaps your definition and understanding of saint is different from what the Bible says. Everyone who has faith in Jesus Christ is a saint. 
in the Bible. And God is not ashamed of calling us saints despite our imperfections. All right? Here's why. He's not looking at us now, who we are right now, but he already sees the end outcome and result of our faith journey. Here's the good news. God never leaves the job to us alone. He takes up that task of sanctifying you and me unto himself every day. He helps us, therefore. He strengthens and he works with us and for us and in us. The whole process of becoming like Jesus is called sanctification. God sanctifies us. He trains us. He disciplines us. And he lets us go through life's challenges trials, and even temptations, so that we may come out strong like refined gold. He is our sanctifier. The Lord, he says, I, the Lord, who sanctifies you, am holy. The holy God will continue working you and me until he, we fully become like him. We can trust in him. We are in good hands. Let's bow eyes and pray. Some of us go through, Lord, why this? Why this happening or not happening? Behind all of these trials and temptations, all these things, God already knows the end result, how we will come out. So we can trust in you, Lord, as you command in the Bible, I am holy, therefore I want you to be holy as well. It is your will for us, and you work on, work on us and change us and transform us into the image of your Son. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today is the Communion Sunday. At this point, I'd like to invite Pauline to come forward.
Jesus Christ shed for you. Amen. It's time for the offering. Ushers, please come.
Please remain standing if you are able as we sing our 634. Christ and the love of our Heavenly Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. 